Hello everyone, Jackson Borges here coming to you from St. George's Chapel in the countryside of Harbison, Delaware. And it is my pleasure to welcome you once again to this stay at home recital. We join together this week at yet another very dark period in our collective history. Not only have we been enduring a pandemic, the likes of which have not been seen for a long time or even ever before, as well, we join together this week after the senseless and brutal murders of three people of color. Breonna Taylor, who was living her life in her apartment, cut down by law enforcement who had the wrong house. Ahmoud Arbery was out for a jog when he was cut down by two white supremacists. And finally, we saw before us over a period of 10 to 20 minutes, the senseless murder of George Floyd at the hands of a law enforcement officer. In times like these, when so many of us are screaming, how long, O oh Lord, and trying to make sense of what is senseless, and trying to deal with not only our own anger and frustration, but that of our brothers and sisters around us. So often we turn to music in times like this, and so it is today. We will begin with a chorale prelude by Johann Sebastian Bach, taken from his Orgelbüchlein, the little organ book, which was designed to be a collection of chorale preludes for each of the Sundays of the church year. We will start with Ich ruf zu dir, Herr Jesu Christ, I cry to thee, Lord Jesus Christ, which is normally heard during Lent. to one more by J.S. Bach, and that is his beautiful Fantasia and Fugue in C minor with the catalog number of 537. The piece opens with sort of an elegiac Fantasia in two sections that is rife with sighing motifs, and they sound like this. Almost as if the very music itself is weeping. The Fantasia gives way to a rather frenetic fugue, with the fugue subject this. Full of the angst and frustration that many of us are presently feeling. So let this beautiful Fantasia and fugue of Bach wash over.
about here would be the time we move into some hymn singing, and we will do that, but I'm going to leave those things for the end. We're going to move now <clears throat> to a composer uh, by the name of Samuel Coleridge Taylor. Samuel Coleridge Taylor was a man of color, born in Great Britain to a British mother and a father of African descent, namely from Sierra Leone. And Taylor's music is that which I believe uh, should be heard and more widely known. He showed early promise as a violinist, and by the time he reached the Royal College of Music, he switched from playing the violin to studying composition. When at the Royal College of Music, he studied composition with the famous teacher and composer Charles Villiers Stanford. He composed a variety of music in a lot of different media, um, organ works, piano works, chamber works, songs, and uh, large-scale choral works. In fact, he is most famous for his cantata entitled The Song of Hiawatha. Uh, he also ran in some pretty heady circles. In fact, he uh, came to the knowledge of Sir Edward Elgar, who recommended him for the Three Choirs Festival in Great Britain, and on an American tour, Samuel Coleridge Taylor had an audience at the invitation of President Theodore Roosevelt. A lot he accomplished in his short 37 years, taken too soon, dying from pneumonia. Uh, but we turn today to two of his organ works. The first is a beautiful piece simply titled Melody, and it is something of a song without words. The second piece I'd like to play is simply entitled Impromptu Number no. 1, and an impromptu sounds just like its title might convey. A piece just off the cuff or out of nowhere for no particular reason, almost as if we thought, hey, today I'd like to go to the beach without having any prior plan for it. So these two pieces by Samuel Coleridge Taylor, his melody in D major and his impromptu number one in A.
turn to our hymn singing time. And as I was preparing this little program for today and poring over what I might play and what I might say, I was trying to think of a couple, two or three hymns that would speak to our present darkness. <clears throat> and like a bolt of lightning, two hymns came out of nowhere and hit me. The first is a beautiful prayer that I think all of us could join in and singing at this time, and that is, let there be peace on earth. The second is, at least to my mind, one of, if not the most important uh, protest songs, and that is, We Shall Overcome. There are five verses to We Shall Overcome, and to both of these hymns, I will open with an extended introduction. Um, Let There Be Peace on Earth is once through, one verse, and the We Shall Overcome has five. We shall overcome, uh, we will walk hand in hand today, God is on our side today, we are not afraid today, and we shall live in peace someday. Now, for each of those verses, I'm going to move up, uh, modulating from C major, finally winding up about F major, which by that time, probably only the sopranos and tenors might be singing, but I invite everyone to join in these choruses and sing mightily and lustily that our spirits, our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our voices would join together in unison singing these words. And may they both rise as prayers and as incense rises that we could one day change the fifth verse of We Shall Overcome, which reads, We shall live in peace someday to we shall live in peace forever. I thank you all for joining us this week, and I'd like to dedicate this week's recital to all those people of people of color, people of different orientations, of different gender orientations. This program is for you. We, we are there, we are here, and I hope that we can at some time join in meaningful dialogue and learning and education together so that we might better understand the journey and the lives of our brothers and sisters who are different from us. Thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to having you join us next week at All Saints Church when we'll be back in Rehoboth Beach. In the meantime, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay well, my friends.